Hey guys, it's Phil coming back at you with another video! Today, I'm back. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. Hopefully, everyone's doing well practicing self-care, not letting one thought, one situation, one person take them outside of what they know to be true, and are doing the next right thing and not letting anything take you out. Whether you're afraid, whether you're scared, whether you're anxious, you're still doubling down, doing the next right thing, and building yourself up to become the best possible version of yourself. And I know 14, 14, 14, 14 people did just that, because that's how many people went in the exam, kicked it directly in the chest, and got the job done since my last video. And a lot of people on this list were doubting themselves, beating themselves up, unsure whether they were doing the right things or what they were doing was correct. But they doubled down. They did everything that they could and went and put themselves on the line to go on the exam, kick it directly in the chest to get the job done. And they are as follows. Cassie B, John L, Samantha F, Kimberly C, Berlinisha C, Elizabeth K, Kiana J, Rihanna B, Angie S, Tara R, Annette C. Ava C, Jody M, and Jenny W. Ah, and I'm so excited, man, because like I said, so many people on that list were unsure whether they should go on the exam. There was somebody on that list was like, man, Phil, I've been trying to do the dang thing for two years. I connected with you. I did everything that I could. I let go of everything that was stopping me, and I went in the exam, kicked it directly in the chest to get the job done. And it's so mind-blowing to me how many people have wrapped and rocked with the Fill in the Gaps community and how many people are on trial for murder charges because they're going to be sentenced to the life that they want to see for themselves. And if you've repped and rocked with me as well, and you've passed your exam, you can send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com and I'll add you to the passing list. And from the bottom of my heart, appreciate every single one of you that's repping and rock with me. And if you're like, man, Phil, I want to do the next right thing. I want to build myself up. I want to go in the exam, kick it directly in the chest to get the job done as well. How can I rock with you? The easiest way to rep and rock with me are the Sunday study groups that I have every single Sunday. Starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time until they kick us out. Can't kick us out. I'm the host. And the time frame for those sessions typically four, four and a half, five, five and a half hours long because I want to give you guys as much information as I possibly can, not to memorize anything, but be able to recognize and apply it to go on the exam, kick it directly in the chest, get the job done. And the next Sunday study groups are as follows 521, human developmental theory. So going over Erickson, PJ, and Coburg and practice questions and not ways to memorize anything, but how to actually conceptualize and understand how you can apply the information that you're reviewing and then going over practice questions related to those. The next one after that is 528 acronym and practice questions, going over the acronym, safety feelings, assess, refer, educate, advocate, facilitate, and intervene, going over the six-step process that I recommend every single person to keep in mind as they are breaking down the questions. In addition to that, the tips that I find most helpful for people to keep in mind to go on the exam, kick it directly in the chest, get the job done, and then practice questions related to application and reasoning situations. And I always say, do not, do not, do not, do not go into those sessions expecting to get everything correct because a lot of times people go into those sessions, get more incorrect than they want to and start doubting themselves, beating themselves up and questioning whether they're ready or not for the exam. So if you come to the session, be ready to learn and be prepared to not get everything right, but understand that you're going to learn something from every single question because a lot of times I'll give you more difficult questions than ones on the actual exam. The next one after that is 6-4. Research, program, and development, and evaluation, going over the steps and stages of research, the types of research, the time lengths for research, the steps of program development, and then peeling it back and reviewing the steps of program evaluation, the types of program evaluation, validity, as well as reliability. In addition to that, practice questions related to those. In addition to that, the next one after that, the 611 DSM-5 adults, going over the personality disorders, schizophrenia spectrum, bipolar 1 versus bipolar 2 disorders the medications and practice questions related to those. And the next one after that, a 618 community interventions, going over the steps of community organizing, the types of advocacy, the different types of concepts that you can see related to those topics and going over practice questions related to those. And as I always say, do not, do not, do not expect to come into these sessions, get in every single question correct and or come in, in these sessions to memorize anything because the goal is never to memorize anything but be able to recognize and apply it to go on the exam, kick it directly in the chest to get the job done. If you want any information related to the upcoming study groups, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com or click the link down below in the description, which is the view more under the title. And if you're not able to attend the sessions live, it's 100% possible to receive the recording and then the materials to review at your own leisure. And the way that you do it is register for the live session and then it'll add your name to the email list in order to not miss anything. In addition to that, I do still offer individual tutoring sessions. So if you want to rep and rock with me directly, reviewing practice questions, reviewing content, 
understand how to develop a process to go on the exam, kick it directly on the chest, get the job done. It's 100% possible. You can do so by going to my calendar in the description below or send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com as well as, as well as, as well as I'm bringing the one day course back because the one day course has been the most successful thing that I've ever done. And a lot of times when people come to the one day course, they're surprised on how much information that they're getting, how much that they're able to dispel the myths and all these different things that people tell them that they should have in their back pocket as they're getting ready to go into the exam. It's going over tips that I find most helpful, the most common reasons why people fail the exam, because what better way to learn what not to do than to learn from the experiences of people that have been not successful in doing so. Different topics, subpoena versus court order, furrow versus supervision, operant conditioning, and the stages of community organizing, subpoena versus court order. We're also going to be going over personality disorders, schizophrenia spectrum, bipolar 1 versus bipolar 2 disorder, the medications, the acronym, safety feelings, assessor for educate, advocate, facilitate, and intervene. And we'll be going over the six-step process that I recommend every single person to keep in mind as they're preparing to break down every single question and then going through the practice questions. And I, as I always say, do not, do not, do not, do not expect to come in the session to get every single question correct because these questions tend to be more difficult than any other session that I have because I want to make sure that since it's the most amount of time that you get with me, the most amount of investment that you can make that I want to give you guys everything that I have. And the next one day course is on 610, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time until they kick us out. They can't kick us out. I'm the host. And the one day course is typically 13, 14 hours long and the entire thing is recorded. So if you're not able to attend the, the session live or you have to leave and come back, you're not going to miss anything and you're able to review the recording as much as you want. And if you want any information related to the one day course, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com or click the link down below in the description. If you're struggling to understand what you should be doing in your preparation, you feel the exam, you're not sure what to do. The one day course is where I'd recommend that you start. So that way you have an idea of a building block that you can continue to build on as you're preparing to go on the exam. And from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you guys that have repping and rocking me in the Sunday study groups, the one day course, the individual tutoring sessions, and as well as for those that do not know, Audible's continue to partner with me on YouTube videos and my podcast. So if you want to support me as well as rep and rock with them as well, you can do so by going to my Audible affiliate link at www.audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps, sign up for the 30 day free trial, get yourself a free book. And then Audible is an easy way to get information on the go. So if you're busy just like me and you still want to become the best possible version of yourself, you can do so by having audio books played to you. In addition to that, if you're an audio learner just like myself, it's a lot easier to digest a book than to pet the pages of the book. In addition to that, if you're wondering, Phil, what book should I get with my Audible free trial? There are a couple that I'd recommend. The Alchemist, The Archer, UOU, and The Power of Habit. Each of them have lessons and blessings not to just help you progress professionally, but also personally to become the best possible version of yourself. And again, if you want to support me, you can go to my Audible affiliate link at www.audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps on a 30-day free trial. And I appreciate every single one of you that have already done that already. In addition to that, if you've not already, hit the thumbs up button down below. It's the thumbs up button by the title. It helps other amazing social workers just like you rep and rock with me as well. Find my videos as well. And it always is amazing how many people are rep and rocking with the Fill in the Gaps community. As well as if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification next to it. It'll send you an email every time that I upload a video so that way you don't miss anything. And there's a free study group coming up relatively soon. In addition to that, if you could do me a favor, leave a comment down below something that you're going through, whether you repped and rock with me, winning the exam, kick it directly in the chest to get the job done, a goal that you have, something you find helpful or anything, because I don't know about anyone else, but I read every single comment, try to reply to as many as I possibly can, and I am mind blown how many people do that, and I appreciate every single one of you guys, that whether you rep and rock with me in Sunday study groups, individual tutoring, just watch my videos, watch my podcast, any of those things, I appreciate every single one of you, and if you haven't already, Check out my podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify at Fill in the Gaps. And I appreciate every single one of you. And I keep saying that, but at the end of the day, I've just been reflecting on where the Fill in the Gaps community started and where it's at right now. And like I always say, if I'm ever reflecting on something, I want to bring it back to you guys. So if you're rocking with me heavy, what has been on my mind is where you start is where you should be thinking about where you're at today. So if you're ever questioning where you're at, so what I was thinking about is when you begin to question where you're at right now or who you are right now, my biggest recommendation is to remind yourself where you first started. Like, what did it look like for you? Who were you? What did you know? What did you not know? 
So that way you can reset yourself and show yourself how much progress you've already made to define how you even got here. And what I mean by that is a lot of times when I'm talking to them, they're like, man, Phil, I failed the exam or man, I'm about to lose my job or man, I'm not even sure if I want to be a social worker anymore or I've failed and did all these different strategies and techniques and I'm not sure what I should do. And I always ask them, what has worked for you? Like, what are you, what are you bringing into the situation? What are you taking away from the situation or what is important to you? And a lot of times people forget where they come from. And what I mean by that is like, some of us may not come from the best environment. Some of us have started with disadvantages. Some of us are actively being oppressed. Some of us are actively being discriminated against. But what I'm, why I'm bringing this up is because you don't want to forget where you came from and, and what it took for you to get here. Because I'm imagining that every single person that's listening to this has had to sacrifice at some capacity. Every single person that's listening to this has a goal that's not gone how they wanted to. Or every single person that is listening to this has ha- experienced loss at some capacity. Whether it's family members, whether it's friendships, whether it's opportunities, whether it's you lost yourself when you're trying to discover who you are, you got to always remind yourself where and why you started doing this. Because when you remind yourself why you started doing something, it helps reset your passion and motivation for doing it. And a lot of what happens when, when we aren't successful or what, a lot of what happens when we, we start questioning what we know to be true is we start invalidating what once was true. And what I mean by that is I was talking to somebody like, me and Phil, I failed the exam three times and I'm, I'm coming back, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like, okay, so what, what, what have you done so far? And they're like, well, it's not worked. None of it's worked. And I'm like, okay, what was your score? on the exam. And again, the score on the exam is the important part. So don't hang your head on this. But they're like, you know what? I was 12 points from passing the exam. Okay, cool. So you're telling me that you've answered questions correctly on the exam, right? They're like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, then you did something right. It's not like you got zero. And if you got zero, I ain't hating it on you. But if you got some correct, don't look at the things you're not doing. Look at the things that you are doing first. Because as humans, it's natural to want to improve on the things that we don't think are going well or that are failures. But the problem with that analysis is, is that we're invalidating or removing everything that's ever come before it, but also removing all of the things that we already have right now. So my recommendation is if you're struggling to understand what you're supposed to be doing, or if you're struggling to find direction, go back to where you started and remind yourself what worked, what did not work. But don't try to replicate the process. Try to extract as much of the positivity that you can or as much of the strategies that worked and upgrade them if you need to or make adaptations if you need to. But do not start from that mindset of I've done nothing right or I've never accomplished X, Y, or Z. So what I'm telling you is when you are nervous or anxious or struggling or not sure where you're supposed to go, don't look outward and try to Find things that you can make up for, but find things within yourself and find things within your process and your journey or your story thus far and extract those things and remind yourself of what those things were like. Because as humans, once we achieve something or as humans, once we get past something, we tend to just give ourselves a frontal lobotomy and forget all of the things that we've ever done. We're like, you know what? That was back then. Well, don't not celebrate that now celebrate everything you've ever been through, but also don't take away from who you are today. You may not have passed the exam. You may not have sustained that situation, but that does not mean that you can never get there because if you're listening to this, you likely failed at some capacity, whether it's you didn't get the grade that you wanted. You didn't do well on a project. People have rejected you. People have pushed you away. People have abused you. People have done all these things. And I always say, it's not what you go through that makes you who you are. It's who you are while doing it. Who did you become? What are some things that you have in your own life that other people will never be able to experience that you have as a lesson and blessing now today? Because a lot of times we tend to compare ourselves to somebody else, but we aren't looking inside of ourselves and saying, what's different about me than that other person? Or man, that other person may be doing something and that's cool. I can support them from a distance, but at the end of the day, I got to find out what makes me who I am. What makes this important to me? I don't need somebody else to confirm what I know. I don't need somebody else to validate who I am. I don't need somebody else to tell me what happened is important or not. I need to start telling myself those things and be my own cheerleader and my own person that's looking out for me and my own person that's not going to run away anymore and my own person that's going to keep going and my own person that is going to become who I'm supposed to be, not who somebody else is supposed to be. Because way too many times, as people are preparing for the exam, they're like, man, my friend told me to look at this. Man, my friend told me to look at that. I'm looking at this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. All you're doing is spreading yourself thin. 
So when you're in the exam, you're on thin ice already and you're ready to fall through. But if you're looking at the one thing or two things that rep and rock with you and resonate with you and you're running that thing all the way into the ground, extract that and remind yourself that it's not the results that are important. I always tell people and they think I'm crazy and maybe I am, but at the end of the day, I tell people I would rather have you get everything wrong in practice, everything. I'm talking every question like you're tanking, you're getting zero percent in practice. Because when somebody does something wrong or when something gets something incorrect, they're going to be more curious about it and say, what are things that I'm doing? What are things that I'm not doing? And what do I need to continue producing something into the future? So if you're in that mode of like, man, Phil, I'm getting my butt kicked. I'm not doing as well as I want to. Get curious. Don't get critical. Get curious and say, what am I doing right? What are some things that went well? And what turn did I take that took me down the wrong path? And if you find yourself using a strategy or technique that is a shortcut, first, next, best, most, and should, you find yourself adding to the question, taking away from the question, get into this mindset of like, man, I got a backpack full of answers. I'm going to be okay in the exam. Put a pause on that and say, is it actually working? Are the strategies that I've been going into the exam with working? And if you're trying to run the same strategies and techniques or add on to strategies and techniques that don't work, just get rid of the things that aren't working. Get rid of the things that you know that aren't working. So for example, if you're an auditory person, you got a book and you're trying to read to understand the information, you're at a disadvantage now. Or if you're an auditory learner and you're not reading the exam out loud in the test, you're at a disadvantage now. Why? Because the way that you learn is not being maximized. But if you're a visual person and you're not taking notes, you're not highlighting, you're not doing all these different things, strike through and all these things, you're at a disadvantage now. You're at a disadvantage because you're not maximizing what you know to be true. And if you're a kinesthetic or tactile person and you're not visualizing it, you're not imagining, you're not acting it out, you're not making real life examples that make sense to you, you're at a disadvantage now. And why I'm saying that is because there's too many social workers at this point, and I've been talking to too many people lately that are like, Phil, I don't think I can get this done, or man, Phil, I'm struggling right now. Man, Phil, I'm doing all these things and nothing's working. And I'm like, okay, but what has worked? What has worked? And if you're like, man, Phil, I've been getting your questions wrong, man, this is so hard, man, I don't think I can do it. Don't beat yourself down. Build yourself up and say, what am I, what am I, what am I seeing? Like, what did I see in the question? If I'm seeing things that are not there, I got to take myself away from that. Or if I'm like, man, I would do this, but my answer's not there. You got to remind yourself that you know stuff, but you can't prescribe something to this test. You can't go in there in a fill in the blank version and be like, er, I'm going to put an E version in there because you, you don't know everything at this point. It doesn't mean that you haven't experienced things. It doesn't mean that you don't have an intelligence. It doesn't mean that you don't have the grit and grind to get it done. But some of us become so complacent and put ourselves into a space and place that anytime that something's not working, we're done. We have become immobile. We're like, you know what? I, I've been doing this for the longest time and it used to work, but now it doesn't. So I'm out. I'm out. But the problem with that is you've not gotten to this point by doing everything perfect. You've not gotten to this point by doing everything 100% correct. You've gotten to this point because you've not given up. You've gotten to this point because you found a way that maximized what you knew to be true and who you were. You've gotten to this point by not giving up and throwing in the towel. But now this exam's come up and you're ready to give up and throw in the towel because it's easier for you to walk away from something that's important to you than for you to sit in it and say, I've not been able to get something that is important to me done, but that doesn't mean that I can't ever get it. Because as, as an individual, you're accomplished. You're somebody that knows a lot of stuff. But if you are going into this exam with your mind made up, or if you're going into this exam already defeated, or saying, you know what, ASWB wants me to fail again, or man, I've been doing all these strategies and techniques and these other programs are telling me, man, you see feelings, gather information, CPS, APS, right to self-determination, I'm eating cereal, man, I'm going down Farm, Gr Farm Gertz Road, man, are you safe? Man, I'm reading the last sentence, man, I'm seeing if all these things work but they've been working in practice, when you go into the exam and get folded like a lawn chair, you got to think, are these questions even tough? Because <laughs> there's questions that people have shown me or talked to me about, and I'm like, okay, but that's not even as difficult as the real exam. All that's doing is pampering your tush and making you feel good. And even a baby that poops itself feels good for a moment, 
till the discomfort kicks in. So don't wait for the dis comfort or don't wait for you to get into an uncomfortable situation in the real exam before you sober up and wise up and be like, man, I need to cut ties with the lies I've been living in and I don't need to stoke my ego up like a fire. I don't need to stoke myself up and look for the results. I need to start paving my path and getting my process ready and right and my mind right and understanding that it's not what I do outside of the exam that matters. It matters if I'm going to show up and do the right things on the day of the test. So you have to be willing to put yourself into that mode of I'm going to build myself up and turn myself into who I need to become versus I'm going to become somebody else. I'm going to do what that person says just because I need to. I'm going to do it because if I don't, I'm going to fail the test. But at the end of the day, don't turn into that mode. And that's what I'm telling you is whenever I start doubting, I start overthinking, I start criticizing, I remind myself, where did you start? What did you know back then? I didn't know half as, as much as I know now. I didn't get to expose myself to as many people as I know now. I didn't have as much confidence. I didn't have as much belief. I didn't have as much, I didn't have as much faith in myself. But what I'm telling you and why I'm telling you this is because when life shows you something, you don't want to run from it. If you, don't, if you don't take that lesson, if you don't take that blessing with you, it's like it never happened. And that's what I'm telling you is you have to remind yourself that you've been through what you've been through to get to where you want to go. And for those that have been rocking with me or, or that have heard, man, I was I mean, back in February, I was like feeling good. I was feeling good. I was like, all right, I'm going to start going back to the gym. I'm going to start getting myself into that mode. I, I'm into it, man. I need to start focusing on my health again. And then I, all right, let's do a free study group. Bam. Did a free study group that Saturday. I was in the hospital later that night and was there for a week. And in that week, it, it showed me like, man, life is so fragile. Life is so important. But if you don't remind yourself of that every single day, you take it for granted. So that stuff has not been lost on me. I still think back like, man, it's so crazy that about three months ago, I was in the hospital. Man, three months ago, I was wondering if, what, what this was going to be like. Man, I was wondering three months ago of all these different things. But at that same time, when I got into the hospital, when I found out she was pregnant, and it's like, man, that's crazy. That a scary moment that loss could have occurred bred something that brought life into this moment. And even now, it's like, man, that's crazy to think that in a couple of months that life is going to entirely change. But it's not like I'm running from it. I remind myself what I've been through and, and what I have inside my moment. But I know that there are things that I don't know. There are some things that I need to learn. There are some things that I need to earn. There are some things that I need to continue becoming who I need to become in order for me to upgrade myself to that level. So that's what I'm telling you. Things don't happen in your life by mistake. Things in your life are meant to occur to give you the experience, the exposure, the skills and abilities that you need in order to encounter the situation at that moment. And if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready for an opportunity. So that's, what I'm, that's my push for you is if you are doing something and it doesn't feel right, or if you're doing something and you're not getting the results that you want, don't throw your hands up in defeat anymore. Throw your hands up ready to write for your right to become the best possible version of yourself. But also remind yourself that you need to count the lessons and blessings that you've been through. But you also need to count where you want to go in the future. And remind yourself that even though you've not gotten to where you wanted to at this point, don't lose faith in yourself. Don't lose, don't lose that belief because once you stop believing, and once you start having faith, and once you start giving ownership, or you start giving accountability, you start giving everything away to somebody else, you stop becoming who you're supposed to be, and you walk the gift out that somebody else has. But later on in the future, you're going to be looking at everyone else to confirm and affirm who you are. So my push is, if you feel alone, or if you feel like you don't have what you need, remind yourself that you've gotten to this point by doing everything that you thought was right. You've gotten to this point because you didn't give up. You've gotten to this point because you've been through what you've been through, whether it was heinous or difficult. And if you're struggling right now, remind yourself that struggling is temporary. The pain is temporary. And everything that you are doing right now could be temporary. But you have to get the experience in order to become experienced to get to the experiences that you want to. If you want to get to spaces and places that no one around you has ever been to, or you want to get to spaces and places that scare you or frighten you, or you're not sure what's on the other side, you have to be willing to take that risk. Because a lot of times people accomplish what they want to and it doesn't feel how they want to. But don't let what it feels like right now take you outside of what it felt like when you first started. Because you had excitement, you had joy, you had a vision of where you wanted to go. But don't let it get clouded right now. Don't let it get overtaken right now. Just because you're not where you want to be in the future doesn't mean that you can't get there now. So that's my push. Keep going. Keep, go keep doing the next right thing. And that's what I'm telling you is what I kept thinking about is, man, when you start questioning where you're at right now or who you are right now, you got to remind yourself of where you came from and what it took for you to get there. 
because it took you a lot to get here. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of commitment. It took a lot of risk. It took a lot of dedication. But don't strip yourself of those skills and abilities because you still have it inside of you. You still have that grit. You still have that vision. You still have that grind. You still have that focus. You just have to allocate it in a different way. You just have to upgrade it in a different way. You just have to view your situation in a different way. Because what you used to view as a detriment or what you used to view as something that is not a good thing, you now have to view it as a lesson and blessing and something that can take you to spaces and places that you've never been or that you never thought that you were going to get through. Because you never know what you're capable of until your back's against the wall and you're put through something that you don't know that is how it's going to turn out. But the only thing that you need to remind yourself is as long as you turn yourself into who you're supposed to be, you're going to be able to sustain every single gain that you are able to do. And if you look at the word again, separate it out, it's a gain. You gain something from having to go through something again. And you may be gaining something that other people don't have. You may be gaining something that may be a value to somebody else that you don't even know. And your experiences are valuable, whether somebody thinks it's valuable or not. It's not up to them. It's up to you and what you think and what you believe and what you want to achieve and how you see yourself getting there. Because you never want to put yourself into a place where you're running at somebody else's pace and going against somebody else and running a race against them. Because when you start doing that, regardless of what you accomplish, you're going to be looking like, man, look at what that person's doing. Or man, look at what that person is accomplishing. Or man, why am I not doing what they're doing? Or man, why am I not accomplishing what they are? Because you're destined to do what you're supposed to do and you're uniquely gifted and talented and need to walk into your gift, not somebody else's gift. Your gift will make room for you, not somebody else. Not somebody else's gift is going to make room for you, but you have to be a lesson and blessing to yourself, but as well as lesson and blessing to the people around you. And don't take anything for granted because at the end of the day, when you are given an opportunity, you have been given the skills and abilities you need in order to maximize what you have. So that's my push. Keep building yourself up. Do not let one thought, one situation, one person or anything take you outside of what you know to be true. Don't continue to go down a path if it doesn't feel right. But reminding yourself, as long as you're aligned with what you thought was important in the past, you're going to get past anything that you need to today to become who you're supposed to be in the future. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you. You guys need anything, send me an email at berda 24 gmailcom And keep doing the next right thing. Keep building yourself up. Never let anything in your path take you off the path that you're supposed to be on. And that's why I always say, you can do anything that you put your mind to, but if you let anything go into your mind that's not supposed to be there, you're going to never mind what you were supposed to do. So that's what I'm telling you. Do not let one thought, one situation, one person take you outside of what you know to be true. I love every single one of you guys. You need anything, send me an email. Hope to see you in the Sunday study groups, individual tutoring, one day course, or any capacity. Keep doing the next right thing. I love every single one of you guys. Take care, be safe. I'm getting out of here. The rest of this video is me talking to people who are nervous about taking the exam and somebody that went in the exam, kicked it directly in the chest to get the job done after their fifth attempt. And on their fifth attempt, they did their next right thing. They built themselves up and ripped the exam's heart out. And now they're living the life that they want to see for themselves. I'm getting out of here, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. In peace. Out, guys. Hi, first time here and excited to be here. I take my exam Tuesday, so looking to get any last minute tips. Hi, Phil, it's Jackie here. Um, Ah. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, I I am about three years out of my master's program. Um, In 2015 in Ohio, they changed it so you can test for your clinical exam until you have all of your supervision hours and all of your practice hours and all of that. So I feel like I probably would have been a lot more confident, you know, taking this exam right out of school versus, you know, a few years out. But I have been studying pretty well. In November, I started studying like an hour to a week. And then um, once I got the approval, they had dates open in at the end of March, and then they didn't have any dates open until July. So I was like, I'm going to do it in March. Worst case, I can always take it again. And a few months later. So um, since I got the approval in at the end of February, I've been studying um, as much as I can. So in between clients that I see, I'm you know taking questions, um, looking over the content. I feel pretty prepared as far as content wise. Um, I think this is such an individualized process for everybody that I'm sort of kind of feeling like, have I studied enough? And I think that's kind of, I think my biggest stressor at that point is just like not knowing whether I'm fully prepared. So yeah.
So walk me through this. What would it look like for you to be fully prepared? Um, I think um, just kind of like just kind of having like that knowing that I can do it. Like, okay, so I guess like the, the, I kind of just assumed like this is just part of the process, and this was going to be not necessarily a walk in the park, but I was like. I passed my LSW like with ease. I don't feel like I studied a whole lot for that like seven years ago. And I kind of had the same idea about this exam. And then I actually heard from some of my classmates that they didn't pass it the first time around. And so that concept kind of spooked me a little bit. I was kind of like, oh, like people don't pass it. And then I, you know, kind of got into like Googling, you know, pass rates and all of that. And I was like, okay, so there actually is this chance that, you know, you know, I need to feel like prepared. And so I think for me, it's just kind of, this idea of like, yeah, I, I do feel like I can pass it, but there's also this little part of me that's like, you may not pass it. And how do you be okay with that if that happens? And what'd you come up with? Like, what is your view of like, wow, if I walk in and fail, what, it, what changes or what would be your perception of yourself? I don't know that I've actually, so I think when I do get to that point of like thinking about that, I try to avoid it because I don't want to spend a whole lot of energy like going there. Um, I mean, I know I kind of have said, like, if I do fail, it's not the end of the world. Like, time still goes on. I could always reschedule a few months later. I don't know that I've actually been able to, like, uh, have a perception of myself if that were to happen. Um, again, because I, I don't think I want to spend a whole lot of energy going there. I don't know. So my recommendation, since it is existent for you, is to just entertain it for a second. And I know that may sound weird because you're like, well, Phil, why would I think about failing if I want to pass? However, if you don't entertain the negative, the reinforcement of the positive kind of goes down. Because if every time you think, man, I'm going to, like I could fail and you push it away, that actually makes that sensation or thought or emotion more intense than if you addressed it and assessed it and said, all right, well, if I failed, this is what life would look like, or this is what I would need to do. But I'm not planning for that. But as long as I entertain the thought, it'll be more acceptable if it does occur. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Because I have noticed that, you know, I do kind of tend to avoid that thought and then it does come up and I'm just like, okay, get away. Like, you know, do something to direct, distract myself so that I can, you know, focus on trying to pass or whatever. So like, for example, Like before I was doing this session, I had a thought. I was like, what do you think is going to happen today? And I was like, well, it could be really, really helpful or motivating and people will find it helpful or um, you misspeak. Um, The information you provide isn't going to be helpful and everyone's going to hate you. And then I had that thought of like, please give me the strength to be able to give the information, motivation and guidance that is needed during the session. But I didn't push away like, man, this could not happen for you because it's 100% possible because I'm a human and we all have moments where things aren't where we think they should be. But it's not like I'm constantly thinking like, oh my God, what is someone going to ask? Do you have the answer? Or are you going to say something wrong? It's, it's a possibility, but that's not where I'm going to shine my light at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's helpful. And knowing that that doubt that your experience is 100% normal and mapping out everything in your control of when you're going to get there, what your process is, and what you particularly need to feel comfortable and confident in the exam is needed. And if you're finding yourself being like, crap, I, I just picture myself getting there and my emotions taking over, having checkpoints within that process is important. So, for example, like when you get checked in, And they're like, prove who you are. So you show them your ID and your second identification. You sign the sheet that says that you're a social worker and that you're not going to cheat. And then they scan your palm prints once. You pick them up. They scan them again. You get pushed over. They take your mugshot, strip you of your belongings. You put all your stuff in your locker and all you have is your license and your locker key. Sitting in the chair prior to them calling you could be a checkpoint of, I'm the closest I've ever been to passing this test. And this is what I plan to do. And then oftentimes people will have a spike of anxiety when they sit down in the chair in the exam. 
And if you find that happening for you, having a checkpoint of like, this is normal and you utilizing the tool that oftentimes people don't utilize, which is the tutorial. The tutorial is the setup and interface. It shows you where your time is, how you navigate the questions, how you flag questions. But if you're like, Phil, I already know these things, utilize that time because it's not docked against your four hours or if you have accommodations, additional time, utilize that tutorial time that's not timed or penalizing you and reflect on what you plan to do prior to launching. And I recommend that because a lot of times people will utilize the first couple of questions as their experimentation of, do I feel comfortable and confident right now? So having checkpoints is going to be important to be able to get that rationale and get yourself into that rational mindset of, I'm going to do what I plan to do. Thank you. That's really helpful. It's my pleasure. And again, just have fun walk in there, kick it directly in the chest, get the job done. And don't let one question, one thought, one situation get you off and give yourself permission to get questions wrong because you can get 44 to 54 of those bad cats wrong and still be on the successful side. Yeah. Yeah. I actually wrote that down. So I've been trying to write down little uh, positive affirmations and just have been hanging them in my home office here and just reviewing them for the last week. So that's helpful. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And if you need anything in the meantime, just drop me a shout. But I think you're on the right path to be able to walk in and execute. I'm taking my test at the end of April. I'm so nervous. I can't even sleep. Hi. How's it going? How's it going? It's going well. How are you? I am trying my best. So walk me through this. Like, what so brings I, this nervousness about you? So I graduated last year. And um, because of COVID, I, I, I scheduled my test for February, but I was pregnant. So I moved it because I had the baby and I just didn't have time to study. And I'm taking it at the end of April. I study. I started studying, let's say January, I study um, a little bit and now I'm studying a lot more and I'm just so nervous. I don't know what to study for. I don't know what to expect. Um, I'm just nervous overall. And one of the things that makes me more nervous is that I am a, um, English is not my first language. So I, when I'm studying, I find myself using the dictionary a lot to, uh, you know, because I, there's things that I don't understand. And, and, and the fact that I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have that on the test makes me very nervous that because I didn't understand one word um, is going to mess up the whole, you know, question and not, I'm not going to get it. And then I'm going to fail the test, you know, basically is how I feel about it. Okay. So something that you can start to do in prep preparation is understanding if that one word that you do not know impacts your ability to answer Mm -hmm. the question so that can kind of be like something like i don't know this word can i still get the correct answer without knowing that word or is that word the vital word into being able to answer and i i i have thought about that and i have been i noticed that there's instances where yes i need to understand what that word means to be able to you know get the answer right but there's instances where i don't need to know the the uh meaning of whatever word and I can still figure out what the question is asking me and get it right, you know? Good. And I say that because a lot of times when we don't know something, it just burns our souls and we're like, gosh, but it may not even be important to be able to get there. And if you find a question or 10 or 20 or 30 questions where that's the case, just giving it your best shot because those 10, 20 or 30 could be pre-test or practice questions, and they may not negatively impact your mm-hmm. score. And of course, there's only 20 practice questions on there. So if it's more than 20, then we're looking at a different situation. But viewing it in that way and giving that fluidity to your process could be helpful as well. Okay. But also giving yourself credit. Like this exam is difficult, but you also don't have to fill in the mm-hmm. blank. You just have to pick the choice that you think, as well as if you can, do you have accommodations on the exam? I mean, I I don't, not at all. Um, And I didn't even know that I can get accommodations until earlier when you guys were talking about that. But at this point, I feel that I should give it my best shot and, and try it. And I mean, if something happens, which that is not what I, what I want, I mean, I'm very positive that 
um, even though I'm nervous about it, I, I, I'm getting myself ready and I feel that I can do a good job without um, any um, accommodations. I mean, if I do need to, I, I, I you know, I, I won't be embarrassed about it and I would get it. It's just that at this point, I just feel that I should try without it and see what happens. You know, I mean, I'm doing what I have to do, which is studying and, um, you know, trying to get ready for it. Okay. I only asked because if you had it, um, we could plan based on that. But since you don't have it, that's 100% okay. Because like you said, I don't think I need it. But if I do need it after taking this exam, I will take that like route. Mm -hmm. So understanding specifically what is causing me to get questions incorrect. And if it's always a word that you do not know, understanding, are there other strategies and techniques that I can utilize to kind of mitigate past those different answer choices? And I mean, and that's not only... Uh, what it, that that's um, I don't think that that's what is that's the only thing that is making me nervous. I think is also the fact of how much it is for me to study, how much it is that I uh, you know you need to know for this test. Because I mean, there's a lot of content and you don't know what's coming in there, so you have to get yourself ready. And it's just a lot of information. And I I have the um, app on my phone, and I find myself you know doing the daily questions, doing the practice quizzes, and sometimes I I. I study, I, I mean, I get, a, I get a question wrong and I do it again and I get it wrong again. And even in like, I have been writing them down, you know, on, on a notebook to study them and see, you know, and, and you know, um, just to look over them again and, and things like that. But I just feel like it's, it's a combination of all the content that, that you need to study for the exam, not knowing, um, you know, what's going to be there. The four hours is a long time and I'm very impatient and in what I mentioned previously. so. And what do you think you could do to kind of calm yourself down to not be in a hurry for those four hours to just like be like fired him out? I really don't know. I mean, breathing is one of the things that because I find myself when I, when I'm getting anxious like that, I just, you know, take a few minutes to to tell myself, hey, you know, um, you ha it's going to be OK. Just just breathe and, and keep on going, you know, and that's basically what I'm planning on doing because I, I know. I can anticipate that I am going to get nervous, you know, while, while doing the test and I'm going to get anxious because I do. And, and I'm just going to tell myself that, you know, and let me ask you this, why do you want to pass this exam? Because this is very important for me. Um, you know, it was, it, it, it was very hard for me to get here. And I, and you know, this is something that I always wanted. And, and since I did my bachelor's, I was like, you know, my master's is where I want to be. And, and after doing my master's to me, it's very important to have my license. And then I'll be done with school. So this is something that I really, really want. To, and I am going to do it. You know, I'm going to get it done. And what do you plan to do after you pass? Um, like, keep what on do you want to do? With, you know, probably a school um, social workers when I want to be at because I have children. So I like their schedule. Um, you know, I, I envision myself to be there. I can see myself doing that kind of work. So you know, I, and, and I want it, you know, I really do. And if one of your children were in the same spot as you are, what would you tell them? keep on trying don't give up you can do this you know you have the ability capacity and to to do it you know don't think about failing just give it your best try and you'll get done you know just work very hard that's what is important you you give it all you have and that's what i'm gonna do too and i and i bring that up because a lot of times with with the materials and the questions we often lose what we would tell other people or what the people that we care about around us are thinking or would want to say to us. So those are some things that you can keep in mind when you're in the exam as well as like, I'm doing this for a purpose greater than me. Mm -hmm. And even thinking about like your children or your goals could kind of ease your anxiety down as well. Yep. Because you can do this, you can. And I think it's more difficult when we often want certainty, but this exam is so uncertain that mm -hmm. we start manifesting and creating situations to make it certain, but it often leads to more negative situations. You're right. And I used in my earlier days, um, not that I've been around that long, <laughs> but in mm -hmm. my earlier days, I used to call this exam the Wizard of Oz. Have you ever seen the Wizard of Oz? Um, I have. So it's like we often create this exam to be a monster. Like this is the most difficult mm -hmm. thing. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not even really sure if I can do this. But if you pull the curtain and notice like 
this is just simply 170 questions that I particularly know already. I just have to remind myself that it's just me viewing 170 different people that day. And I need to meet them where they're at that moment, not save their life that moment. Mm -hmm. So conceptualizing in that way of this is a difficult situation, but I have the skills and abilities to work through the difficult situation. Exactly. And just reminding yourself of I'm getting questions wrong, but that's okay because I can get every single question wrong in practice, but I will perform on the day of the exam because I know better. And when you know better, you tend to do better. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Thank you. And if you need anything in the meantime, um, just drop me a shout. Thank you so much. Of course. Take care and be safe. Kai Phillip, I would like to share my experience working towards my LMSW exam and how you were a pivotal part of my preparation for passing the exam. I sure am. Hey, Phil. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm trying my best. I see. I see. Hello, everyone. Phil, you you know I'm an interesting. I was one of your interesting clients, right? I was. <laughs> I <laughs> Phil could tell you the story. He could tell you the stories, but um, I want you to jump in with this, Phil. Honestly, in regards to how you helped me, okay? Just your point of view from you know as your as the tutor t- uh to how you help me get to uh pass this exam okay so my name is Loria I'm in Atlanta Georgia and I took and passed the LMSW exam in December yay oh, I feel so good to say that but it wasn't easy guys I failed I think four I think four times I failed I failed that test four times. Um, the first two times, you know, I graduated with my MSW in 2016. Uh, 2017 is when I, thank you guys, 2017 is when I said, you know what, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go take this test. And um, I almost passed it. Uh, I, passed, I, I missed it by four questions. Or was it eight? Mm. It was eight, probably. (laughs) And um, I said, okay, um, uh, I was uh, studying by myself. I was just reading books and taking little practice tests and stuff like that and just going on YouTube and whatnot. I haven't met Phil yet, no. So um, uh, 2018 came and I failed again. And I think it was because I did not... I, I more so when I kind of put it off because there was a lot of anxiety towards the test. There was a lot going on in my life. And um, I was scared of the test, to be honest with you guys. And I could definitely feel your pain when you guys say it's like this test is coming up a whole, a whole lot of anxiety. You're stuttering on words, things you've never seen. You don't know what's going to be on the test. So you're cramming or you're not even cramming. You're actually being consistent and regular and trying to do your best to study. And yeah, I feel so I was, I was upset at myself, but I also said, and I was also being honest with myself too, that maybe I should look deep and see what I need to do. That's different. What, what can I do to, to get different results? So now, um, I went into, I, I, I uh, signed up for the AATBS program, and that's where I got a lot of practice tests in 2019, 2020. And um, they also had tutors there. But I also saw Phil's videos, so I started going to his groups. So Phil dropped a lot of knowledge in regards to how to take these tests and break them down. You saw that was very, that's very important on this test, like how to break them down, just taking your time and knowing what type of questions they are, right? So, but I also, in the background, on top of listening to his group, being a part of his group um, meetings, I also too was a part of this program where I would just take these online tests and whenever I got it wrong, I would just study by myself. Then... I told, then it was uh, time to take the test in 2020, early 2020. I think it was uh, August. And um, 
I got only two times to sit with Phil one on one uh, to to discuss what I needed to do and whatnot. And I still had a little bit of fear and doubt, but I still wanted to take it because I knew I studied so hard for this test. And um, I failed it by, guess what, you guys? One point. I failed it by one point. And I was de devastated. I went into depression and stuff. And I, I just did, I thought it was me. I started hating, hate, like I didn't know what was wrong with me. But I finally dusted my shoulders off, pulled myself out of that. And I reached out to Phil and I met with him regularly every other week. Right. And then I signed up for this other program, uh, socialworkexams.com. And I took the test. I kid you not, a practice test uh, uh, three to four days a week. OK. And that's four hours out of your day. And that was after your eight to eight to five or something like that, you know, and I would make it a regular part of my day. I start seeing this exam as more as like a I had to switch it in my mind like it was a game, uh, for lack of a better word. It's like a challenge that I was up against. And I kept taking it and taking it and taking it. And I kept passing. And I said to myself, so, you know, I'm going back for my one point. Then I got into a car accident, hurt myself. And this is enters Phil, which was my first one on one with him. <laughs> and he I, I was so serious about taking this exam. I I said, I don't care if this I got into a car accident. No, I, I was not bruised. I wasn't bleeding, but, you know, I had probably internal injuries, but on my way home and I, and I had to drive myself home because I got hit from the back. Um, Phil and I was on there talking. Phil, you remember that? Yeah. I remember the cop walking up to the window. Well, you were like, Phil, you're never going to believe this. And I was like, well, I've, I'm a social worker. I've, I've seen quite a few things in my day. And you're like, no, you're not. And then a cop walks up to the window and is like, Everything is fine. You can go. I was like, wait, what? You're like, yeah, I got into a car accident. Can you read the questions to me? Ah, <laughs> uh, exactly. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm not playing. And Phil was like, you know, you could, you could, you could just reschedule. And I'm like, no. And I guess I tell you guys this story is because a lot of things could come up in your life to be a reason why or give you an excuse as to why you could, you could put it off or you need to. You need to like kind of like eat like uh, you need to do it another day. But no, you know, what I mean, uh, if you make the time, if you're serious about it, you know, just honestly, just give yourself an hour, two hours uh, throughout your day. And and also to make sure you have a really good support group like Bill, like your mom, maybe your sister, your brother, your friends. Those are real. That's very positive. And this is the part where I get to the part where Phil helped me emotionally. And I think that was what was missing in my exam preparation. I was very hard on myself. Uh, there was a lot of positive affirmations. He helped me with breaking down questions and reminding me of the types of questions. He reminded me to slow down and breathe every time I read a question and it's not a race. He he was he gave extra reassurance when when I doubted myself when he saw that I was doubting myself he he made me he was, he made me laugh he made me smile and you know and I started talking positive to myself I started looking in the mirror and saying positive affirmations. I started being willing to go out and reach out to friends and family and not trap myself in my room all the time. And that changed my perspective because I also too was reminded that all those tests I've taken, even though I failed, I was closer. I got closer and closer to the goal. So no matter how many times you fail, remember that the, don't don't mind the word failure. Just know that you have to flip that and say, hey, let me 
figure out what's my new process and that you're closer and closer to your goal. Okay. And to keep going. I just wanted to remind you guys of that. And the one-on-ones really help. So now in regards to my reminder to you guys, I I encourage you guys to push, push, please. Cause like I feel so much freer now that I have this LMSW. And it was four years coming four years and I still got more with the LCSW it's just an attitude change now that you gotta have and you gotta see it a different kind of way I'm going to say one thing that really helped me is again taking that the the questions over and over again I did the ASWB questions um or practice tests before the actual test and I thought it was too risky but I said you know what I'm I'm passing it. And I, without a doubt, I did a pass the test. So I said, you know what? I'm, I see clear as day that I'm doing this and I believe it. I'm, it's literally right here. My, the efforts are showing up on this computer and lo and behold, I pass the next day. So please be encouraged that I, that are, there are people out there that have failed, but you pass eventually you pass. Okay. So hold on to your, remember your dreams and goals is bigger than your fear, period. And Phil, man, Phil, you're so amazing. Thank you so much for what you're doing for us. I plan to be uh, doing one-on-ones with you as soon as I'm, I, I'm ready for this LCSW, get my hours and stuff. But yes, remember your Remember your future, remember your goals, and remember that's your driving force when you fail or that you see a failure or th- when you go and take your test. You know, that your goals is bigger than that, okay? So with that being said, I hope you guys have a good night. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for sharing your experience. And if you don't mind, I think something that could be really, really helpful is walk us through that last tutoring session that we had before your exam of what that was like of yo i don't think i can do this and you were getting questions Mm -hmm. wrong like what was that like what switched or what was what happened during that session for you in order to walk in and pass it because i think that's important. absolutely so phil and i on our one-on-ones and there were a couple of questions i got wrong right and um i had to he told me to take a step back and relax. You know this. And he's right. I did know it. It was just, I was answering too fast or I was doubting myself. I would always do this thing where I would answer the right question, but because I asked myself another question and overthought, I, I chose the next one. There were the two best answers there, but I chose the first one well. But then the, I would choose the second one because I would overthink. And sometimes we overthink and therefore we miss the question. You know, we miss we, we, when it's just plain and simple, honestly. You, it's, you, we make the questions bigger than what it, they need to meet. We, we add dogs and cats and what if they went to the store? <laughs> we add things to the question when it's just literally stay in the moment, kind of like mindfulness. You know what I mean? Like you be in the moment. So, you know, we got to practice something like that within our questions. And when he reminded me to stop and just relax and take your time, and I was able to start answering the questions, right? So, therefore, that doubtfulness kind of fade away. And I started to amp myself up to the point where I was going too fast. And then I got it wrong. <laughs> uh, he's like, you're getting, you're getting cocky there, Luria. Just relax. <laughs> so yes. So that last, that last, um, one-on-one I had with him before the test, that was the week before the test or no, actually three days before the test. It did help. It was beneficial. Uh, to get that reminder that I was on the right track. It was the extra affirmation I needed, extra gold in my pocket to push me to know that I got this. You guys got this. And thanks for describing that because 
it was wild how the closer that you got, the less confident that you got, even when you were getting the question yeah, right. I, I literally, it's like, I didn't believe it. It's like, I would, I would get, I would, there was even a session where I got like only two wrong out of his, all these questions and scenarios he developed. And I sounded so doubtful, like, okay, like, you know, am I doing right? Like I would have to re-ask him questions to see. It's like, I didn't believe. And I encourage you guys to, every time you get something wrong, celebrate, I mean, right, excuse me, celebrate it. And even if you get it wrong too, it's okay. It's okay. It's a practice. You know what I mean? Okay, just figure out why. Oh, okay, next time. I got it. I got you. Next time, you're not going to get that over me. No, I got you. So, again, man, I, I was, it didn't make sense why I got doubtful edging closer to the test, but I got more answers right edging closer to the test. It didn't make sense. But eventually, I said I believed. I believe in what I'm seeing. And also too, he reminded me that you have to believe in your efforts that you're making right now and be in this moment and don't be so hard on yourself. There you go. Well, thanks for coming back and sharing. I really, really appreciate it. And it's good that you were able to do this. Um, and like I said, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you coming back, still rapping and rocking and walking in the gift that you know that you have. Agree. Thank you for having me back on and thank you for everything that you're doing for us. I really appreciate you. I will be talking to you again, reaching out to you again, most definitely, hopefully with less shenanigans like car accidents and stuff like that. <laughs> I pray that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> you guys take care. And again, you guys are going to pass. Remember, your your goals are bigger than your fears.